Welcome to our daily devotion. The Methodist Church of Barbados invites you to sing, pray, and worship with us as we declare God's glory and celebrate His mighty acts. Gracious God and our Father in heaven, I give you all the praise and the thanks that is due to your matchless name. Father God, you are so gracious and loving towards us, even when we have been less than faithful to you. Father, you have compassion on us and will hear and answer us when we call on you with open and contrite hearts. So, Father, we ask you for forgiveness and open our hearts to your love and compassion. For you are a true God, whose compassion faileth never. Dear God, we open our hearts to you and pray that you keep us ever steadfast, trusting only in your mercy and your grace. Lord, you see and know all that is going on in us and around us in the world today. You know our thoughts and all the outcomes of our actions, even before we can conceive them. Teach us to know and to do all that is good in thy sight, that we may be a light to guide others to you and to be our brother's keeper. In these troublesome times, Lord, keep us focused on your word so that we can do your will at all times. Father, remember in your mercy all those who have responsibility 
among us for teaching and leading your church here on earth. Strengthen them and uphold them by your grace and power. Remember too in your mercy, O Lord, all those who rule in earthly governments, so that they too will rule with compassion and care, especially for the poor and helpless among us. Father, remember all those among us who are ailing in some way from sickness, loss of income, grief, despair. Lord, comfort and provide for them. Remember all the children among us. Lord, we are seeing such ill will and violence. Help us to help them to be examples of good. Bless the homes and the families that they may guide them aright in your blessed name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers, we beseech you, and grant us peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 14 to 18. Sing aloud, O daughter Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has turned away your enemies. The king of Israel, the Lord is in your midst. You shall fear disaster no more. On that day, it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst. A warrior who gains victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will exult over you with loud singing as on a day of festival. I will remove disaster from you so that you will not bear reproach for it. This is the word of the Lord.
my brothers and sisters, my focus this evening is from the passage which was read, Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 14 to 18, and I'm concentrating on verse 17. The Lord your God is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will exult over you with loud singing. Let us pray. And now, O oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, for you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. My brothers and sisters, as we reflect on this passage of scripture, the first thing we notice is that the sovereignty of God is doubly emphasized by the use of the references, the Lord, your God. It is also personalized, not only the Lord, which can be universally and generally applied, but your God, which narrows it down to every individual whose trust is in God. This means that we can claim him as our God in a very personal way, as we have developed a personal relationship with him. Of course, you and I know that this comes through prayer, confession of our sins, reading the word, observance of the sacraments, and living out our faith with trust in him. As we take a further look, we are told that God is in your midst. In other words, we must make him the center of our lives. The pivotal point from which all of our activities and actions are directed, the very essence of all our being and existence. The human heart is in the center of our bodies. Without it, we cannot function as we will be physically dead. So then, without God at the center of our lives, we will be spiritually dead. Throughout the Bible, we see instances of God being in the midst of human situations. In the book of Joshua, chapter 3, at verse 17, it is recorded that the priests who bore the ark of the covenant of the Lord stood on dry ground in the midst of the river Jordan while the Israelites crossed over. In Psalm 46, at verse 5, it says, God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be moved. In the book of Daniel, we see the divine presence walking in the midst of the fiery furnace. Daniel chapter 3, verse 25. Jesus promised that when two or three are gathered in his name, he will be in the midst. With all this in mind, let us look at the five exciting things in the passage that happen when we make God the center of our lives. Before we do so, I must again point out the powerful impact of the language used. Throughout the verse, it says, He will. This is different from, He shall. He will carries a determination to carry out what is promised. For those of us who took marriage vows, we didn't respond by saying, I shall. We said, I will. Firstly, he is in our midst as a warrior. This means that he will fight for us. Remember that we wage war against sin and that on our own strength, we cannot win. We also come up against rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places. Recall what it meant to Job to have God at the center of his life. Also the Hebrew lads in the fiery furnace. Remember also what happened for the Israelites when the Ark of the Covenant took center stage during the battles. They won, as that Ark represented the presence of God. As a warrior, Psalm 46 describes him as the Lord of hosts and gives the assurance that he is with us. Secondly, it is he who gives victory. This means that he will save us. With him we are overcomers and victory is assured. 
In the book of Romans chapter 8, verse 37, we find the assurance that in all these things, we will be more than conquerors through him who loved us. The, these things mentioned in are very relevant today. Hardship, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril or sword. On this occasion, he gives us the victory over these things. When we look at Psalm 46, verses 2 and 3, we get a glimpse of some of the things that can happen. But as we saw earlier, God is in the midst of the city, therefore it shall not be moved. This time, he takes the victory. The Bible also tells us that the battle is the Lord's. Often we forget this and try to fight on our own. His tactics are far different to ours as he sees far beyond our immediate situation. Just go to him and pray and leave it in his hands. Don't tell him how to fight for you. Thirdly, he will rejoice over you with gladness. If we remain faithful, he will take such a delight in us that he will be proud of us. If you have a wayward child who always does shameful and disgraceful things, you will not be too proud to introduce that child to friends and acquaintances. However, if that child is an achiever, you will be proud to let people know whose child he or she is. So it is with the Heavenly Father. That is why he could confidently challenge the devil to go after Job, because he knew Job's heart and Job's unfailing trust in him. Can our God say the same for each of us? Can he rejoice over us? Fourthly, he will renew you in his love. At this point, let us take note of the words found in a popular hymn. New every morning is the love. We know that with each new day, God's love for us grows and is strengthened as we walk and talk with him. Consider how Enoch walked and talked to God so that in the end he was so renewed in God's love that he was translated. In our mortal experience, we start out loving someone passionately. But as time goes by, that love often grows cold to the point where the flames die. Not so before God. Just bear in mind that such love is a two-way process. Every day we should endeavor to renew our love to God. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. In turn, when we do this, we will be amazed at the blessings we will receive from Him as we are renewed in His love. In the fifth instance, he will exult over you with loud singing. Do not think for one moment that rejoicing is limited to human beings. It is also a divine attribute which flows from the Father and extends to the angels and the heavenly hosts. Before we go any further, let us look at the meaning of the word exult. To exult means rejoicing to the point where you leap and dance for joy. Imagine how much we are worth in the sight of the Almighty, that he leaps with loud singing over us. No doubt the entire heavenly host will join in and swell the chorus. To exult with loud singing also says to us that such joy cannot be contained or suppressed. It must be released. It must be expressed. In the Bible, exaltation was seen when David danced before the ark. When the blind man was healed, when the disciples sang so lustily that the authorities demanded Jesus to silence them, it also implies that God can show approval of us. There were times in the Bible when the voice of God was heard in divine approval. One was at the baptism of Jesus. The other was on the Mount of Transfiguration. In our current state with the effects of the disruption caused by COVID-19, we need to be reminded that God is in the midst of our situation. Jesus was asleep in a boat when a storm arose. He was in a stern, the very rear end of the boat. But he was the 
peace and the calm in the midst of the storm. So my brothers and sisters, when we come to the realization that God is in our midst, it means for us protection, joy, peace, trust, hope, love, and ultimately victory. Finally, on the other hand, there are times when God shows his disapproval of us and our actions. When his anger is kindled against us, it can be strong and devastating, especially if we continue to grieve his spirit. However, because he is a loving God and wants the best for us, he sent his Son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to save us. He daily gives us opportunities to do the right thing. When we confess our sins, renounce evil and embark on a life of holiness, he will exult over us with loud singing. Remember that there is joy in heaven when one lost sheep is found. May we live in such a way that the Lord our God will always exult over us with loud singing and that we always keep him in the midst of our lives. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. My brothers and sisters, as we approach a new church year with all of its challenges, more so in this time of the COVID-19 pandemic, let us pray earnestly for our clergy, our laity, and our various congregations bearing in mind that God is in the midst of everything, victory in every adversity is assured. Let us pray. Almighty God, at this time we bring before you our church, your church, which was established as a living body through your Son, Jesus Christ. As we face uncertainty with the approach of a new church here, we are certain of one thing, the promise which Jesus gave to us when he said, Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. Also your promise that you will never leave us, nor forsake us. And so we bring the temporal leadership of the church before you, our bishop, our presbyters, deacons, deaconesses, our preachers, stewards, and class leaders. Strengthen and undergird them with your spirit's might. Give to us all a new vision of where you want us to go with you, especially at this time of the COVID-19 pandemic. Most of all, help us to move forward with confidence, knowing that you are in the midst of every situation. For indeed, this, this is the God we adore, our faithful, unchangeable friend, whose love is as great as his power, and neither knows measure nor end. Tis Jesus, the first and the last, whose spirit shall guide us safe home. We'll praise him for all that is past, and trust him for all that's to come. Amen.
Let go of the past. Let go of the pain. Let go of the problems. Turn your back on them as you face your father. Be blessed with refreshing and renewal in his presence as you pursue all that he has created you for. Be blessed as God rejoices over you with great gladness. Be blessed. In the wonderful sound of the Lord himself exulting over you in happy song, be blessed in the name of your Savior who rejoices over you. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest, remain, and abide with you now and forevermore. And we all say with one voice, Amen. for being a part of our daily devotion. We trust it has been a blessing to you. Now together, let us hold fast to his word and may it dwell in all of us richly.